Um, as Simon already said, my um, presentation from last week was really walking people through the different features of Archimate. Today it's much more focused on uh, practical examples, although I will start with the highlights of what's new. Um, so introducing Archimate itself as a language, for, you, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, Archimate is, is intended for enterprise architects to provide more rigorous uh, specifications of architecture. And the, the main idea is basically shown in the cartoon on the right. You might have all kinds of nice diagrams, but if you always have to ask the architect what they actually mean, if they have no fixed meaning, uh, then you're in trouble. Then you have to, uh, well, do a lot of work. Um, say the typical PowerPoint architecture doesn't really work out in practice. And uh, I think the, the, the cartoon is sort of a worst case scenario when it doesn't mean anything, it's just rectangles. But if you have clear models, you can do a lot more with them. It's not just a picture to hang on the wall. It's actually a structure that you can analyze that creates transparency and traceability across the entire enterprise from high level strategic goals to the implementation in systems to the projects that realize uh, these systems to the processes, the people involved, etc. So it's really much more than just pretty pictures. This also helps you in creating alignment in your organization across these different areas. Uh, by, by providing these, link, uh, these links, it becomes much easier to, to see where there's misalignment, where you should uh, work on that, where you can help the organization become more coherent. And finally, models also inform decision making because you can use them in various ways to perform all kinds of calculations. Uh, cost calculations, for example, uh, you can create, say, cost distribution models. How do the costs of your infrastructure uh, add up and how are they going to be uh, distributed to the business units making use of your systems? Uh, you can use them for portfolio management, risk assessment, all kinds of uh, dependency analyses, impact of change analyses, etc. So models are really a very powerful means to support change. So what does Archimate provide then as a language? Um, well, it is a language with concepts to describe architectures. It's not a detailed design language. It's really intended for this architecture level of abstraction. So it doesn't replace languages like UML or BPMN or others that are really more detailed. Uh, it's a framework. It has its own framework for organizing these concepts. And I'll walk you through the changes in that over the, over the uh, iterations of the language. It has its own graphical notation, but it also has a vision on how to visualize uh, architecture for different stakeholders. And the main point is that the notation itself um, is not completely tightly coupled to the underlying models. You could visualize models in various ways. Of course, it's useful to have a standard notation to avoid the problem that I mentioned before, that the architects don't understand each other. But it's equally important that you can visualize these models in different ways and make that stakeholder dependent. Of course, there's no fixed way of doing that because it really depends on the kind of stakeholders you have. But the idea is that the visualization itself should be decoupled in a way from uh, the model structure. So you have your models in a repository and visualize them in various ways. But today, of course, I will focus on Archimedes as a standard notation as well. So you will see mostly Archimedes pictures. But it's really important to keep in mind that, for example, when you address uh, a management audience, that the Archimedes pictures, the graphical notation, might not be the best way to do that, but the argument models provide you with a lot of rigor and analysis power that you can use uh, to provide these decision makers with the right information. Well, finally, of course, argument is an open standard maintained by the open group. We haven't, uh, well, we don't have to go into that because you're attending an open group webinar. So positioning the Archimedes language uh, uh, in between strategy and design, this is, this is uh, what, you, what you typically would do. Archimedes as a modeling language and Archimedes models bridge this gap between high level strategic approaches like the business model canvas or balanced scorecard or SWOT analyses or what have you, and detailed design models in languages like BPMN or UML or others. Archimedes is less detailed, it's less formalized than the lower level models. Uh, but it's more concrete than the higher level strategy models that you find in the upper layer. So Archimate bridges that gap, and it also bridges the gap between different models like BPMN and UML, because uh, if you want to model your business processes and your applications and show the relationships between them, Archimate helps you with that, but you couldn't do that within just BPMN or just UML. You, you need the bridge between them to have this overview. Um, one graph that's maybe interesting to you, uh, I ran a poll last year on the Archimate LinkedIn group 
to see how, where Archimate typically is used. And as you can see, government and finance and um, information technology as well, those are the biggest sectors where you see usage of Archimate. But we also see an increasing usage in, for example, manufacturing and retail and telecommunications and other uh, areas. So enterprise architecture as a discipline, but Archimate as a language in particular, is increasingly used in the less traditional sectors where it, it grew up. It really started out in government and finance, but today it's less than half of uh, Archimate users that are in these two sectors. So we do see an increased usage in other areas, and that was also one of the motivating factors behind the development of the next version of the language. So that's um, my next slide. Why do we need a new version of Archimate? Well, of course, the discipline of enterprise architecture is evolving. It's used in other areas, in other domains, um, and that requires new concepts to relate uh, enterprise architecture to other areas. Um, especially over the last years, we saw an increasing demand for relating architecture to business strategy. It's really increasingly seen as a means for implementing strategy, for making sure that the strategy can really work, and also to provide feedback to strategy to see what your, your strategic options are to deal with uh, technology innovation. A second important addition is in uh, the physical world. Archimate until now didn't have any concepts for modeling uh, physical technology. So you could, well, later on I'll give an example of a steel factory. That's really physical. But also the Internet of Things and, and those kinds of technology innovations. We could model the Internet, but we could model the things. Now we have concepts to do that. Now we'll show examples of that as well. Like I showed on the, on the, on the previous slide, we see increased usage of argument in other domains than the traditional government and finance. So new domains require new kinds of concepts like, well, manufacturing with its physical equipment. We need to, to have the concept for modeling those. And then, of course, there are various other reasons for improving the language. Increased consistency, comprehensibility, uh, improvements in the notation, etc., and improvements, uh, improvements in the alignment with other standards. I won't go into all the details of the, uh, the improvements. We have seen most of that last week, but I will show some of the areas where we have uh, added uh, concepts and where we have uh, improved. So I will just walk you through some of the highlights. But first of all, a little more about the structure of Archimate. Um, Archimate's framework initially started out with these three columns of active structure, behavior, and passive structure, which resemble the structure of uh, human language. All human languages have subjects, verbs, and objects. The order depends on the grammar of the language, but they all have subjects, verbs, and objects. And that was the inspire, inspiration behind the structure of the argument framework initially. So in this example, we have John, who is the subject of a sentence. He is an actor in this model. He reads a book, so his process is reading, and uh, the, the thing he reads is a book, a business object. Um, this structure is replicated across the layers that we have in Archimate, and initially those were the business application and technology layers uh, that are very common in many architecture approaches. So that's what was the first version of the Archimate language, Archimate version 1. That was what was developed in this R&D project with the Telematica Institute uh, I spoke about. Then in version 2 of the language, we added two different areas that were not yet covered. And those were the motivation uh, world. So what's the reason behind your architecture? Why do you want to have something? What are your goals, your requirements, your principles, etc.? And the implementation and migration world. How do you realize the architecture in practice? So what are your project programs, work packages as we call them in Archimate? What are the deliverables they provide? How do you sequence this, etc.? Um, so this is the second version of Archimate, version 2, that came out in around 2012. Now we've added two new areas. We've uh, added some concepts for modeling strategy. Uh, we'll get to that later on. Things like capability, for example. And we've added concepts for modeling the physical world. So technology that's not IT, but technology in the, in the physical realm. And as you can see from this picture, it's closely linked to the technology layer that we already have. So I will show you how this works. It's, it's really integrated because increasingly physical technology is, of course, computerized, is driven by IT systems, and it's inseparable. The Internet of Things is just one example of that, but most technology nowadays has some sort of IT inside it. So that's now version 3 of the language. This is the coverage of, uh, of Archimate at the moment. Um, 
for those of you who are really into the details of working is where we no longer talk about extensions we used to call it the motivation extension for example but we see this really as an integral uh, whole uh, set of concepts that belongs together so it's not just a core and some extensions but we still sometimes address the original part of our commit as the core of the language because that's where it all started. So a few more highlights of this uh, new version of the language before we go into more uh, examples. Uh, we added concepts for modeling uh, strategic issues, ca capability-based planning as one uh, important way of implementing strategy. So we will see those. Uh, this really helps you in, in strategy execution. Uh, and these are also in line with other approaches. SOGAF, of course, is a prominent one, but also you might be familiar with the BizBoc from the Business Architecture Guild. Their capability concept, just to name one, is really closely aligned with the one in, uh, in Archimate. Or the Business Motivation Model, which has a concept called Course of Action for Modeling Strategies and Tactics. We also have that now in Archimate. So those were really approaches that we looked closely at. Uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We, we took concepts from existing uh, uh, methods, approaches, languages, and link them to what we have in Archimate. Um, there's also a white paper on capability-based planning forthcoming, uh, so we will provide more detail on how this works in practice. Then we have these new physical elements. Uh, so this technology layer was extended with uh, elements for the, the physical world, things like manufacturing or logistics, but also computer-controlled machinery, the Internet of Things, etc. And I will provide examples of that later on as well. Then there were some other improvements. One that's probably quite popular with the more experienced argument modelers is that you can now relate things to relationships. Uh, for example, on the left, you see that you can relate an insurance policy to a so-called flow relationship between policy creation and policy management. So you can actually model what is flowing there. Or on the right, you can link relationships to plateaus. And uh, we didn't have that. And you couldn't model that in uh, a certain plateau in the development of your architecture. Uh, a relationship was added, that there was a new link between two uh, applications. You could model the applications as part of the plateau without the relationships. So now we have added that. You can do that. Uh, another improvement is that we now have actual semantics for the grouping concept. Grouping used to be just a, a graphical thing. It, it didn't mean anything. It didn't bind the stuff inside it. It was just a graphical notation. But now you can really use it uh, much more extensively. You can put things inside it that are really aggregated by the group. And you can draw relationships to and from the grouping. So in this case, you see that this grouping really aggregates a number of processes in an object, and these together realize a service. So this provides a lot more flexibility, for example, in modeling architecture building blocks. Um, if you're a TOGAF user, you know about the prominence of ABBs and SVBs. Well, the grouping concept is really useful for modeling those. But of course, you can use it in various other ways as well. Um, and finally, another uh, highlight is that we added a specific notation that helps you identify in which layer a certain concept lives, especially in larger diagrams, larger uh, views on your architecture where you combine multiple layers. Because we have kept the notation quite simple, you see that, for example, a service is denoted in the same way across the different layers. But it's useful to have uh, a notation that makes a difference, especially if you, for example, print in black and white and really want to make clear in which layer you live. Um, and if you uh, look at this example here, you see the, the little B in the, corners, the corner for business layer, the A for application layer, and the C for the technology layer. So this is just one example of how to use that. Of course, in this example, it would be pretty clear what, what layer things are in, but this might be helpful as well. It's an optional notation. You're not obliged to use this, but it might help you. And then we have done some, some updates to increase the consistency of the language, so it's, it's more regular. We uh, align the definitions within the language across the different layers. Uh, we renamed the elements in the technology layer, which were called infrastructure something. So we, yeah, that was quite inconsistent because the layer was called technology, so we renamed them technology something. And we also have consistency across the layers in the behavioral concepts, for example. We have process interaction and event at all layers next to function that we already had. Uh, we have collaboration, etc. So it's, it's a more regular language in that way. Uh, 